Hi, Angie. It's Tracy from the agency. I have good news. The job's come up, and it's a big one, just like you wanted. It's a long drive, southwest, right in the middle of bloody nowhere. But it's just one elderly gentleman living on a farm. Early dementia symptoms, so it's all pretty standard. You'll need to do some light cooking, but nothing too crazy. You know the drill. His regular care is off sick, and he needs someone to keep an eye on the poor chap until she gets back. I'd go myself. It sounds like a lovely holiday in the country, but, you know, kids, and I'm stuck in the office, as always. But you'll love it there. I'm sure you will. Uh, Angie? I can't. Something's come up. I'm sorry. These last two months have been the best months of my life. Will you marry me? A nurse falling in love with a patient? God, no. Marrying a dying man. I never understood why she did it. Japan? Are you kidding me? Of course I want to go. It, it's only like the best place on earth. I'm afraid the patient is not responding to the treatment. We should start planning palliative care. April. That's perfect. We're gonna see the cherry blossoms. James really shouldn't be traveling in his current condition. I'm sorry, but I can't allow it. <sighs> it's alright. We'll go once I'm done with this oh, fucking keeper. Angie. I'm sorry. He was... James was a great guy. I'm sorry for your loss. I'm sorry for your loss. I'm sorry for your loss. <gasps> it's a nasty cup, Angie. Should go have that locked out. Are you okay? You look a bit pale. Everyone felt sorry for her, but no one really said anything. I have bad news, Mrs. Weber. Worst, I'm afraid. It's lung cancer. Late stages. But didn't her husband die of cancer last year? Both of them? What are the odds? Maybe, but at this point, it's so far gone, there's nothing we can do. I'm sorry, Mrs. Weber. We cannot cure your cancer. You have about six months left to this.
Tracy, I've changed my mind. I'll take that job. That's great. I'll be honest. I thought people would fight each other over those few weeks in Devon, but guess what? Nobody wants to go. The clean country air, the double pay. I mean, what's not to like? But it's all right. I've got my best nurse on the job now. It's all good. I, I know things have been hard for you. I'm glad you've changed your mind. It'll be good for you to go out there and, um... Tracy, this is probably my last job. I just need to save up some money and then... I want to travel for a bit. Go to Japan. See the cherry blossoms. Well, okay. You've not had a holiday abroad for years. By all means, go. But you'll be back, right? I'll let you know when I get back home. Bye. You must be Angie, then. Come in, come in. Oh, you're a lifesaver. Dad's regular carer was in a car accident recently. Nothing life-threatening. But she's had some pins and screws put in her knee, and it'll be months before she can get back to work. Now, I would have loved to take Dad with me to the city. I could have him close to where I work. I'd look after him myself. But he won't have it, the stubborn old fool that he is. Still, he's lived in this house his whole life. He was born just there in the other room. He might as well spend what time he has left here on the farm where he's happy, right? Yes. It's a beautiful place indeed. It is. I can appreciate it more now. But to be honest, for a young girl growing up here wasn't exactly exciting. Not everyone was born to be a farmer, right? You should meet Dad. Come with me. He's in the lounge. After you. Meet Angie, Dad. She's gonna look after you until Joyce gets back. Hello, dear. Hi. Oh, sorry, that's from the office. I should take it. Hello? Hi, Sam. No, I shan't be long. I'm just showing the house to that new nurse. I'll be back before five, half past tops. Oh, I know. He always does that. Yeah. See you soon. Ta-ta! Oh, I'm really strapped for time today, I'm afraid. I'll just explain everything quickly and leave you to it. I'll need you to cook for George. He prefers the good old classics, nothing too complicated. The truth is, he just eats sandwiches every day if he could. But don't let him do that. I'll leave you a list of his favourite meals. Anything that's there, just help yourself. That was my sweet. 
Here's Dad's bedroom. He might occasionally need help with this or that, but on most days he still manages to dress on his own. And here's the bathroom he uses. Again, just watch him to make sure he doesn't slip on the tiles and break a zip or something. Dad likes to be called George. You can take him for a walk sometimes if the weather's okay, but he prefers to spend most of the day here watching TV. That means you'll have plenty of time left for yourself. There's lots of old books in the house if you ever get bored, and an old computer in the office. But I'm not sure if it works. And finally, my old bedroom. That's your space now, so make yourself at home. Just don't let the cats in. They get too cozy indoors and they never want to leave. <laughs> Hello? I've left a little guidebook on the kitchen table for you. Make sure to check it every now and then, you know, when you get stumped. And please, keep a close eye on George. I know he seems fine most of the time, but he does have his moments. You hungry? Well, I don't know. Oh, I, uh, I suppose I could always do with a nice sandwich if you have one. Wanna go for a walk? Oh, uh, uh, that's a bit windy, isn't it? I suppose. 
I think I'll give it a mess, if you don't mind. Yeah, sure. Fancy a cup of tea? Oh, you just add one, thank you. Anything good on the telly? Oh, yeah. Uh, it's uh, one of those um, American films. Ah, right. Would you like a blanket? Well, that's very sweet of you, dear. But no, thank you. I'm quite warm. Together, together we'll make. Let me know if you need anything, yeah? Uh, right, old dear. <laughs> Will do. This is all bloody awful, isn't it? What do you mean, dear? I don't even know. Don't listen to me, George. I'm just having a bad day. I 
Union time for the last three days. 